Good morning, yogis. Welcome to your practice. This is Stephen from Yoga Works. I'm teaching from the sunny South Africa. I'm in Johannesburg at home. And it's a pleasure to have you back to practice either live or later on when you see this video. So today our theme is to show up and to let go. While the showing up, you've already done it. You are here on your yoga mat um, at home. You have carved out a little bit of time for your practice, for your health, for your well-being. Of course, that is the first step. Without the showing up, no progress or uh, benefits can come our way. So uh, well done for taking that step. Now, the second step is perhaps the hardest, which is to let go of the outcome. You keep coming back. That's the first one. You're showing up. You are dedicated. You have a, a regular sense that you come back and that you keep going. But then as you keep going, you let go of the outcome. So someday it's going to be amazing. Every pose will just feel like uh, it's just coming naturally to you. You will do all the harder poses and balance without problems. And in other days, none of this will work. It will just feel like you don't have any energy. You are, um, all you can do is perhaps Shavasana on your mat. And that is fine. So we keep coming back. We let go of the outcome. And those are two central principles that the yoga tradition is teaching us. So that is what this class is all about. So on a physical level, we'll be focusing on the whole side body. You can think of it as a, as a kaseem between the front body and the back body, connecting the two, keeping the two together as you like. And it's often a bit of a, an overlooked area in the body. We, we spend a lot of time doing back bends and forward bends, and stretching hamstrings, and uh, we often uh, don't think about the sides. So this includes the neck. We're going to start there just in a moment. And it will include the sides here, which is mostly the, the lats, the big muscle under your armpit, and the obliques, the, the core muscles in your waist, you could say. And then also the outer hips a little bit into the IT band, which connects your hip to your knee. I always find when I do this, I feel nice and spacious and free, almost like you're, you've just grown a couple of centimeters. So uh, let me know afterwards how it feels for you. Take a comfortable seat. We'll start with a couple of delicious neck stretches, often an area where we hold a lot of tension, the upper back, the shoulders, the neck. So just lean your head a little bit to the left side. I'm not mirroring you, so just figure out which side it is. And just hang out here for a little moment, relax your shoulders down. And we're not trying to go very far, we're just trying to get a bit of space on the, the right side of the neck here, that's it. Keep relaxing the shoulders, take a few breaths. And then just wrap the left arm around the head so the hand rests around your right ear somewhere. And we're just doing this not to pull the head strongly to the side, but just to have a bit of extra weight resting on the head. So accept that weight. And then ever so slightly push your head up into the left hand. You can add one more thing if you like. The right arm can now stretch out to the right somewhere. And then maybe just move it a little bit forward, a little bit back until you find a juicy spot that you can stay a little bit longer. Here where the stretch feels just right. A good amount of length, a little bit of challenge, but nothing too much. It's early on in our practice. And then slowly release. Let's do the other side, relax the shoulders, just lean the right ear a little bit towards your right shoulder. This is the first phase. If you have any neck issues, I wouldn't go any further than this. This is probably plenty. Just feel all the spaciousness, the left side of the neck into the shoulder joint. And if it feels good to you, you can wrap the right arm around your head. Gently rest the arm on top of the head. And then with the head, we're resisting a little bit up into the hand. A couple of breaths to see what this side feels like. It might be a whole other story than the first side. It's quite normal. 
and then maybe if you want like to add the left arm to the left you can do that maybe move a little bit forward a little bit back a little bit up and down to find the best spot just to linger for a little bit longer and then slowly release shake the shoulders out for a moment and then come to a cross-legged position you can choose which leg is in front we're going to be swapping anyway and place left hand to the left just do simple side bend so this is the the kind of work that we'll be focusing on length from the hip all the way to fingertips and then swap through both poses just very briefly Swap the legs the other way around, so the other shin, oh I didn't swap, the other shin is in front, and take the left arm overhead. And then lift up, breathe boat, other leg in front, it's up to you to remember, and then right arm over. We're not trying to go far, we're just trying to explore the territory that we will be working with. We're showing up for a practice. And at the same time, we're letting go of whatever happens. Maybe it's going to be amazing. Or maybe today is one of those low energy days where you just need to go a little bit easier. Again, both poses will do one more on each side. Swap the legs. Left arm over. Lift up. Right arm over. We start on this side, so let's do one more on the left arm. Brief boat and left arm over. We want to try and move in a way that doesn't feel stressful, a way that feels sustainable that we can do hopefully for the rest of our lives. Now open the legs wide and bring the right heel in, into the middle. Nice. Go really softly here. We're not trying to go far again. Left arm lower it down to his left knee. And then lift the right arm and just reach it over the head. Just hang out here. Mild, mild side bend. We'll do this one again towards the end of the class. And then we'll just try to see if we find a little bit more space. If there's any difference that we can notice. For now, just let gravity do its work. Invite you into this pose. Let the breath be easy. And then return to the center. Let's swap legs. Right leg out. Left foot in. Lower right elbow to his right knee somewhere. Left arm reach it open and over the head. Just hold out here. There's no need to reach for that foot. If it happens, it's okay. But this is not our goal in any way. Our goal is to lengthen the side body. And more importantly, the goal is to show up and let go. Which means we're not very interested in reaching a foot or a bind or even a particular pose. Those are little details that might be part of the practice, but they are not the main target. Now I slowly come back up and just transition into plank pose. Come into plank, take a moment here. This is a strengthening pose. Never super easy always takes a good deal of effort and strength in the core in the legs in the arms so just notice and then push back to down and facing dog lift your hips up and back and if you feel it's a little bit hard to get a good length in the spine then just bend the knees a little bit so you can slide your hips up and back and really feel the length in the side body that we are cultivating today and then can you push your hands down a little bit more and slide the hips back a little bit more. Nice, from here, stretch the right leg up and back. Nice, shift into one-legged plank, keep the right leg lifted if you can. And then from here, just bring the right knee towards the right elbow, there's no need to touch it. And then the, the right foot lifted a little bit up towards your left elbow. Think. Pigeon pose, hovering in the air. I know it's terribly unsatisfying to do a pigeon like this, but um, just be patient. And then lift the right leg back up. 
One more time, shift forward, one legged plank, same leg. Right knee towards right elbow, right foot towards left elbow. Hover, three, two, one. Lower, down, ha. This is a lot better. This is the pigeon pose you're used to. We'll also do a little bit more of an active variation, not just flopping down and resting. So walk your hands a little bit over to the, the left side, so away from that right knee. With the right hand, stretch extra far and lean a little bit forward. With the right hand, push down. With the right hip, pull back. Subtle actions, you may not see any difference, but you'll definitely feel it in your own body. Nice, downward facing dog, let's step back. Left leg lifted high. Shift into one legged plank. Hover the left leg. Bring the left knee towards left elbow. Bring the left foot a little bit higher up towards the right elbow. Hovering pigeon pose. A lot of strength. You're not going very far, I know. Left leg high again. Let's do one more round. Shift forward one legged plank. Left knee towards left elbow, left foot lifted as high as you can. Feel active range of motion, your left hip, external rotation. And then place everything down. Thank goodness. Walk the right foot a little bit back. Nice. We're going to the right this time just to get an extra side bend. Left hand, take it as far as it will go. Lengthen your chest. Think more forward than down, really. We don't want to just flop down. And then push the left hand down, pull the left hip back and feel the length in the side body from your left fingertips all the way down to the outer left hip. Another breath or so. And then step back to downward facing dog. Slowly walk your feet forward to the front of the mat. Bend your knees a little bit more. And then do a slow spinal roll. Really slow, really slow. Lower back straightening up. Then the middle back straightening up. Then between the shoulder blades, the upper back. Finally, the shoulders roll back and the head lifts. Last. A couple of times, roll the shoulders. And then lift your arms high. We do side bend. I'll just show you from the front. Lower the hands next to your hips. And then slide your right hand down your right thigh towards the knee. The left hand will reach up automatically. And then just hold this for a moment. Feel we're, we're side bending to the right. Which means the right side is actually contracting, the left side is getting a stretch, it's lengthening. And then lift up, left hand slide it down, doesn't matter how far you go, just go to your own edge. Feel left side is short, is contracting, right side is lengthening, stay with the breath. And lift back up, nice, now lift both arms, lower the right hand next to the right hip. Take the left arm over the head, same pose, but just now we've added the arm that's lifted. Just to get a little bit more into the lats and under the left armpit. Take another deep breath. Slowly lift up, both arms up. Lower the left hand next to the left hip. Take the left hand, slide it down. Take the right arm, reach it over head to the side. Try not to lean forward or back, just straight to the side, however far that is for you. Take another deeper breath, inhale. Exhale. Slowly lift up, both hands to the heart. Inhale, rise, feel the length in the side body. Exhale, keep that length as you fall forward and down. You can always bend your knees at the bottom. Inhale, slide the chest forward and a little bit up. 
Exhale, step right foot back, lower your right knee. Couple of rounds, sun salutations to move with the breath. Inhale to lift, low lung. Exhale to step into plank. Inhale, plank pose, hold for a moment. Exhale, slowly lower down onto your belly. Mini cobra pose, slide the chest forward and up. Notice the, the length of the side body even here. Exhale down, down the facing dog. Inhale here. Exhale, step right foot forward, the left knee down. Inhale, move with the breath, almost like the inhale lifts up your arms. Exhale, step lightly forward, forward fold. Inhale to rise, go all the way up, press your feet down. Exhale, hands to heart. Second side, inhale, lengthen the side body, reach up. Exhale, dive. Inhale, flat back, slide the chest forward. Again, lengthen the sides. Exhale, hands down, left foot back. Lower the left knee. Inhale, one breath, lift your arms, low lunge. Exhale, prepare for plank. Inhale, plank pose, pause. Exhale, slowly down. Little cobra pose, roll the shoulders back. Light pressure with the hands, lengthen the side body. Exhale, down dog, lift your hips up and back. Inhale and down dog. Exhale, step left foot forward, the right knee down. Inhale, rise, low lunge. Exhale, hands down, step forward and fall, keep it simple. Inhale, go all the way up, let the breath lift you. Exhale, hands return to the heart. Let's do one more round, we'll change it up slightly. Inhale. Exhale, flow with confidence, with skill. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward, flat back, push the shins with the hands. Exhale, step right foot back. This time keep your right knee lifted if that is an option for you. Lift your arms, high lunge. If you need more balance, lower the right knee down. Lower your hands, prepare for plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale, slowly down. Nice. Come to the left elbow, roll onto your left side body, stack your right leg on top of the left, and then just help a little with the hand just to lift the hips slightly off the mat. This is forearm side plank. If it's way too much, you can always help with your top foot in front of the left knee. But if it's possible, hold for a moment. Right arm, you can have it on the hip, or you can reach it over the head towards the front of your mat. Five, four, three, two, almost there. One, lower down, down at facing dog, find your way back. Inhale and down dog. Exhale, step right foot forward into high lunge. Lift your arms, inhale. Exhale, step forward, forward fold, top of the mat. Inhale, go all the way up, push your feet down. How tall can you get? Exhale, hands to heart. Last side, here we go, inhale. Get taller, reach up through the ring fingers. Exhale, dive forward and down, forward fold. Feel the length, inhale, flat back, push your shins. Exhale, hands down, left leg back. Keep the knee lifted if you can, high lunge, just for a moment, one breath. Exhale, prepare for plank. Nice. Slowly lower down. Place right elbow, almost like sphinx pose. Roll onto your right side body, left leg on top of the right. And then lift up the hips a little bit. You can support with left hand, you can support with left foot, or if you can, the full pose is left arm up, 
and reach it over, push down with your right elbow, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done, downward facing dog, push back, inhale and down dog, we're moving. Exhale, left foot forward, high lunge. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, step forward, forward fold. Inhale, rise, go all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, close your eyes and rest for a few breaths. It doesn't matter if there's a pose or a whole series of poses that we cannot yet do. Maybe we can never do them. All of this is irrelevant. We're showing up. We're doing the best we can on that particular day with our body that we have, with any injuries or issues we're working with. And whatever's the outcome, we gratefully accept. It may not be the ones we hoped for, but as we notice, we're not as much in control as we had always thought. So the letting go part is probably one of the most important things we'll learn. Inhale, go all the way up, stretch up through the fingers, lengthen the side body, and exhale forward, fold over the legs, Uttanasa. Inhale to flat back, push the shins away, stretch your heart forward. Exhale, just step to downward dog. We're gonna turn around so you see better. Step your right foot forward, turn the left heel down, so your heels are more or less in the same line. And then sweep your arms up for warrior two. Have a good bend in the front knee. Super straight, strong back leg. Nice, just have hands on the hips, check that the, the front hip doesn't dip down, this often happens. Try to level the hips, even lift the right hip up a little bit. Nice. And then slide the left hand on the back leg, lift the right arm up, so it's reverse warrior. And then just bend the right elbow with the hand, you can hold the back of your head, the base of the skull, and just lean the head back a little bit. Keep bending that front knee. Amazing side stretch, I really love this one. And then slowly come up again. Right elbow to right thigh. Left arm over, this is the first option, but actually I'll show you a second option which I prefer for side bending. It works like this, right shoulder, inside right knee somewhere, and then with the right hand I like to hold the left hip and stretch, oops, there's a tree, let's stretch the left arm over the head towards the front. Hold for a breath or two. Big, big side bend. On the left we're just modifying the poses that we know to get more into the side body. And then slowly straighten back up, straighten the front leg and shift back a little bit so I have space. Straighten the front leg, nice. From here, turn the hips a little bit towards the top corner of your mat and start to lean forward for triangle pose. Either right hand to right shin or right fingertip down if, if it's within your reach. Don't try to open the left hip, in fact turn it down a little bit and then reach your left arm over the head, even look down a little bit. So it's not how we often practice these poses, but I'm doing this to get more into the, the lats and into the side body in a more unconventional way sometimes. So feel it, push the feet down, lengthen left fingertips. I'll offer one more option if it's within your reach, you can reach left hand to outside of right ankle and then use this to to get a deeper stretch slowly release hands down inhale to plank exhale slowly lower locust pose this time lift your hands your arms your chest your legs. Exhale, make your way back to downward facing dog. Mm. 
Step your left foot forward. Turn the right heel down. Open the arms, warrior two pose. Take a moment, feel the length in the side body. Often we we'll tend to lean a little bit more to one side or crunch the one side a little bit closed. So good bend in the front knee, feel that left knee track over the middle of the left foot. Feel the edge of the right foot push down and back into the end of the mat. And then have hands on hips like we did the first side. Just check is the left hip uh, lowering down a little bit too much. Can you level the hips a little bit? And slide the right hand down to his right knee. Lift the left arm up. Bend the left elbow, hold the back of the head somewhere. And then lean back slightly. Couple of breaths, so much space in the left side body between your ribs in your waist and then lift back up well done you know the two options left elbow left thigh right arm over amazing for side bend here this is traditional side angle or modified a little bit left shoulder inside left thigh left hand hold the front of the right hip right arm reach forward towards the front and then imagine giving yourself a self-assist with that left hand. Gently pull the right hip down. So your right fingertips lengthen away from that outer hip. Now slowly lift back up. Straighten the legs. Preparing for triangle pose. Again, not the most traditional variation that you might be used to. Lower the left hand to left shin or ankle. With the right hip, usually we roll it back. I don't teach it that way, but it's often done. Roll it down a little bit instead. Left fingertips, if they can, they can touch down or you can have them rest on the block. And then right arm reach up and over towards the front. Push the right foot down, you're lengthening away from that right foot. Stretch the right fingertips forward, breathe. We're showing up, we're doing the best we can. We're letting go of the outcome. Maybe you just noticed um, a very restricted area in your body. It's all good. Maybe your hamstrings are tight. Of course they're tight. This is why you keep coming back to your yoga practice. Last option, right hand. If it can hold the outside of left ankle, you can do that. And then just round your back and roll down a little bit of the chest. We want to walk out of every yoga practice feeling that we can do this. Maybe there's one or two poses that are still a bit of a challenge, a work in progress, that's fine. But we shouldn't walk away feeling we're useless, we can't do any of it. This would defeat the point of our yoga practice. Now step back into plank. So if there's any pose that doesn't feel good, you need to modify, you need to skip, please go ahead. Slowly lower down. Locust pose, reach your toes back, reach your fingers back, lengthen the chest forward. Get that same idea of lengthening the side body with this, this mild back bend here. And then press back, downward facing dog. From here, bend the right knee a lot. Turn the left heel down at a 45 degree angle. And then just lean the hips a little bit to the right. The left hand, you'll feel it wants to lift, but actually push it down a little bit more. And maybe look under that left armpit towards the left. Nice. Return to center. Let's do the second side. It's going to be left knee bends a lot. Right heel, turn it into the side. Lean the hips towards the left. And then look under the right armpit. And right hand becomes lighter in this pose, but push it down as much as you can. Push down to the right hand, pull up from the right hip. You can feel quite intense, so let the breath soften you from the inside. And return to the center.
Nice. From here, shorten your down dog a little bit. So I'm walking my hands maybe half a hand's distance closer to the feet. Reach your right hand back to the outside of left shin, maybe left ankle. If you can't reach it, just keep walking closer until it is within your reach. No problem. And then do the same. Push the left hand down. Twist your body to the left. Maybe bend the right elbow a little bit. And release right hand down. Strong pose. It's a very simple pose, but strong. Right hand pushes down, left hand reaches to the outside of right shin, right ankle, wherever. Walk closer if you need to, and then bend the left elbow, but twist your body to the right. Push the right hand down. Slowly release. Lower your knees. Brief child's pose. We're exactly halfway our one hour practice. See how you feel. And then return to downward facing dog. We'll do one more of those down dog twists here. We're combining actually the two previous ones we've done. Walk your hands a little bit closer to a shortish down dog. Bend the right knee a lot, turn the left heel in. So same thing as we started the other, the other side. And with the right hand, hold the outside of the left ankle. So we're combining those previous two. And then bend the right elbow and twist in. A whole lot of instructions, but once you get this, it feels amazing. If it doesn't, then just get out and do one of the previous ones. Nice. Return to center. Bend the left knee, turn the right heel down. With the left hand, hold outside of the right ankle, shin. Twist into this and push the right hand down. Amazing side body length, which hopefully will make you feel really energized and calm afterwards. Slowly release. Downward facing dog. Now step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. Nice. From here, shorten your stance a little bit. So you get more or less a square shape under that right knee, under that right thigh. Nice. Then lift up and pull the belly a little bit back, almost like you're trying to round your back. Right hand to right knee, lift the left arm up. And then take your left arm over the side into a mild side bend. You won't have to go very far, I'm sure. Keep pushing the left knee down. And keep the belly, the core, abdominals a little bit active here. And then can you feel the stretch all the way down the deep inside the front of the left hip. Slowly release. We'll do, you can repeat this version, it's a bit more accessible, or you can do the next one, which is slightly deeper, let's say. So step a little bit forward and deepen your lunge. So now we are sliding the hips forward. Place left hand to right knee, place the right hand down somewhere. If this is hard, you could just lift up uh, onto a block or something else that you have. And then lift the left arm up and reach it over the head. Keep your feet really active. They're pushing down. They're even sliding towards each other. And then lengthen the left arm away from the left knee. Take a deeper breath. Slowly release. Step back to down dog. Couple breaths and down dog. Let all of this sink in. 
you're showing up, you're putting in all this effort into your practice. And of course you'll receive benefits, but we're not waiting around for this. It might take years or it might take the rest of our life. All of this is fine. Step your left forward. Lower the right knee down. Come up. Instead of going as forward as possible, lift up and slide the left foot in a bit. Nice. Activate your abdominals, so pull the belly a little bit back. Push the right knee down. And then lift the right arm up, left hand can stay on the left knee. Take your right arm a little bit over the head towards the side. For me, this is way more intense than at first sight. So just notice the difference, left and right. We're mainly stretching hip flexors here, but of course, we're never stretching one single muscle at a time. It's always a whole chain of muscles that are working together as a whole. So feel the whole seam of your side body along the side there. Slowly come up, well done. Slide the left foot a little bit forward, the hips can sink forward and down. You could stay here even, this is a good, this is a good pose to rest a little bit longer. Or if you want more of a side bend, left fingertips down to a block or to the mat. Right arm, reach it up and over the head. And then get the feet to be really active here. They're pushing down, they're sliding towards each other. Your legs might even be trembling with the effort. And let the upper body be soft and open. The legs are so active that the upper body can go wherever it wants in safety and without fear. Take another deeper breath. And then slowly release and step back to plank pose. Inhale and plank. Exhale slowly, lower down. Nice, I'm gonna do upward facing dog or you can do cobra again. If you're doing up dog, your shoulders are over the wrists and then the shoulders press a little bit back as the chest goes forward, tops of the feet pressing down. So just feel the side length in your back bend here. Exhale back to downward facing dog, well done. Now step left foot forward and turn to the side. It might be your right foot, I'll just turn to the side. Nice, so we're in Prasarita Padutanasana, the wide-legged forward fold. Nice, you keep your hands under your shoulders here. And then just fold forward a little bit more and walk your hands a bit towards your left foot. It might be just a little bit of the way, this is fine, you'll get a nice side bend here. Or if it's possible, you can hold the left ankle with your right hand and then bend that elbow. And instead of pulling myself to his left leg, I'm gonna round my back and lean a little bit away. So I'm getting even more stretch into the outside of that right shoulder here. The left arm, if it's in the way, you can just wrap it around your back. Round your back, if you're holding that left ankle, round your back and pull away from that left leg with your spine. Slowly release, back to center, fold down the middle. Nice, and walk both hands a little bit over to the right. It doesn't matter, you're here, you showed up and we're letting go. As I said, it's gonna be the hardest thing because you want to reach that foot or that ankle, or you want to look like somebody else that you've seen on Instagram, but this may not be possible, so just let go of that. Maybe hold left hand to right ankle. If it's not, it's not a problem at all. And then, instead of pulling yourself to the right, pull back with your spine, round your spine. Bend that left elbow a bit, and then feel the stretch under the left armpit. Really hard area to get into sometime. But I find this pose does a great job of this. Slowly release. Final forward fold, just hang in there. You can help with your hands to pull the head a little bit closer. 
Or you can just hang down without too much effort. And then slowly come back up to flat back. Lower your knees down. Nice. Lower the knees down. Bring your right knee in front of the left knee. Open the feet a little bit to the sides and then just sit down in between. Oh yes, I'm not mirroring you, so I shouldn't do it either here. Right knee in front of left, sit back. This pose can sometimes be a little bit challenging to get into if you have uh, tightness in the outer hips. If that's the case, instead of right knee on top of left, have right shin in front of left shin. So cross-legged pose, you're gonna have the same benefits and you'll probably be a whole lot more comfortable if that is you. Nice. Lengthen the side body. Feel the work in the outer hips. If you need a little bit more, then ask yourself why. And if you have a very good reason, you can always reach your hands a little bit forward. Make your hips quite heavy. Soften them down. And settle into the breath. You might be cross-legged, right chin in front of left, same thing. Just lean a little bit forward, see how you go. And let go of the outcome. Slowly look back up. If you're in the Gumukasana legs like me, just place right foot outside your left knee. Otherwise, from the cross-legged fold, same thing, pull the left heel in, right foot over left knee. Wrap the left arm, elbow around your right knee, interlace your fingers and turn to your right. Couple of breaths here. Again, we're lengthening the side body, so we don't want to crunch down or hunch forward. Lift the chest up. Feel all the space we have cultivated in this session and the previous poses. So use it here to get a sense of a lift and spaciousness. And then the twist is almost the byproduct of that. Now slowly return to the center. We'll do one more twist here. You can do the same as we did before, or you can have left elbow hook it over the right knee. Right hand goes behind you, and now you've got a little bit more uh, leverage with that left arm to push against the right knee to turn to the side. We still don't want to lose the length in the side body, so keep that space. And can you direct the breath into your sides? Slowly release. Extend the right leg long. Bend the left foot and bring it inside your right leg. Nice. And then bend the right leg so much that you can, you can hold the left hand to the outside of the right foot. Nice. So do this. Your leg might be straight, but uh, you might need to bend it a lot to get there. Nice. And then maybe straighten the leg out a little bit as far as you can without letting go of the outside edge of that foot. It might be bent a lot right here, this is fine. Or you might be able to straighten it all the way, which is also fine. And I like to thread the right arm through and round my back a little bit here. I find this is one of the best poses to get into, you know, the side of the lower back, just along the length of the spine deep structural muscle called the QL, the quadratus lumborum. Often if we have lower back issues, then it's often that muscle that plays a part. So feel this, this deep, satisfying stretch. Don't worry if your knee is bent or not, this is not the point. And 
then slowly release. Nice. Come back onto the knees. Bring the left knee in front of the right knee or whichever side you have done yet. Open the feet a little bit wider and sit down into Gumukasana, the cow face legs. Again, if this one is not happening for you, it feels terrible, then don't struggle, but rather have left shin in front of the right. I like to keep the feet a little bit active. So get into your, your choice of the hip stretch. Might be enough to just get into it with the legs or lean a little bit forward to increase the intensity. Make the hips nice and heavy so they don't lift up. Couple of breaths here to soften down. Remember, any yoga pose is just a shape that we get into, something that our body can do. And the shape is never the goal, it's just a way to practice something. Maybe a way to learn something or lengthen or strengthen or balance. That's it. And then lift back up, place the left foot outside your right knee. Wrap the right elbow around the front of the left knee, interlace your fingers, lift the chest up, lots of length in the side body again, and turn a little bit to the side, hug your knee in quite close to the chest. Couple of breaths here, the main thing is lengthening side body. The side effect is that the twist is going to have more space because of the length. You can stay here or second part of twist, I'm placing left hand behind me and then you can transfer right elbow outside your left knee, push it out or into each other a little bit more, lift the chest up and see where you get to. Some days you go really far without any effort, sometimes it's a struggle to even stumble onto your mat, it is what it is, but all the benefits are going to come from you showing up for your practice. Of course, your practice is yourself. You're showing up for yourself. You're building your resilience, your capacity, your focus, your joy and happiness, which you can then spread to other people, of course. Slowly release. Straighten the left leg out. Bring the right foot inside the left knee. And I said straighten the leg, but actually bend it a little bit so your right hand can hold the outside of the left foot. This might be where you stay, bend the knee as much as you need to. Or if you get a bit more space, start to kick your foot into the hand a little bit more. Leg might straighten, might not, it doesn't matter. And then round your back and again find that, that point on the, the right side of the spine, a deep muscle that connects the rib cage to the back of the pelvis, your QL, which after long periods of sitting or stressful work or driving or traveling gets a little bit tight, sometimes causes problems in the lower back. This is a great way to get in there. Slowly release. Nice, open the legs wide. This is exactly how we started the class about 15 minutes ago. And we'll repeat that pose and see if we can notice any difference. Bring the right foot in to the inside of the hip. With the left elbow lower down towards your left knee, any amount is fine. With the right arm open, the shoulder and reach the right arm over 
And I don't know about you, but I feel a whole deal more space in the, the right side of the ribcage, under this right arm, in the right waist, all the way down to the side of the right hip. If your foot is here, you can hold it, but sometimes to reach the foot, we compromise on the alignment or the space, so it's not always worth it. Most of the time, I just like to hang out here. With the left hand, if it's in the way, you can hold the other knee or the other hip. And just have this, enjoy this side bend. Enjoy this space that you found. Slowly lift back up. Let's swap sides. Left foot comes in, right leg stretch it out. Right elbow, soften it down to his right knee. The left arm open, and then reach it up and over the head. And again, drop in, it is what it is. The foot might be there within easy reach. The foot might not be there within easy reach. All of these are details really. What we're really after is that feeling of expansiveness, of being able to reach towards a goal that previously was not achievable for us. A sense of building skill and control and capacity to use in life whatever we want. Not just in yoga, of course. Two more breaths here, soften down. And then slowly come out. Take a comfortable seat. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and feel. Just park your body here for a little moment and tune in to the inner landscape. You showed up for your practice. You did a whole range of side lengthening poses and other poses. And now you have arrived here towards the end of this class, feeling like this. So just see, if this feels terrible, then you shouldn't come back to this yoga practice. Just ditch it and choose another activity. But if this in some way feels like spacious and a happy place and something you should do more of, then that's exactly what you should do. Explore, keep coming back, give up the results of this practice and just show up and let go. Letting go of perfect yoga poses. Letting go of opinions of other people. They might love what you're doing. They might not like it at all. Letting go of the likes and the comments on social media. You're doing this for you, not for other people. Letting go also of uh, the sense that we always need to be in control. which is clearly not the case as the current uh, coronavirus crisis is teaching us. We are much less in control of everything than we thought. For the next minute or so, I'll keep quiet. Just let your breath move. Let the mind rest. Let the body rest.
you're welcome to stay a little bit longer in your seated meditation. Or the ultimate letting go pose is of course Shavasana, the final relaxation. So if that's your pose, lie down on your back. Move around until you're really comfortable. And this pose is really where the yoga begins. I know at the end of the class it, it seems like this is where the yoga ends and your daily life starts. No, this is where it begins. This is where you assemble the benefits of this yoga practice deep into your operating system and carry them with you in the rest of the day. So for the next few minutes, rest, let go, relax. Enjoy this moment of not having to do anything. Start to take a few deeper breaths. If you've got more time, you're at home, you're of course welcome to rest here for longer. If you've only got one hour to practice, start to move your hands, move your feet. Bend your knees, roll over onto your side. And then slowly come up to sitting. Bring your hands together. Offer thanks, hands to your forehead. Put your hands to your heart. And bow to yourself on your mat. Thank you so much for practicing. Namaste, everybody. I hope you're keeping well and safe. And let me know in the comments how it goes, how you feel, what else you want to practice, how does yoga help you in these uh, challenging times. I'd love to hear from you. And so many of you have asked, how can I support uh, these online classes and make the content available to more and more people? I have created... Um, a donation option on my website yogaworks.co.za under the contacts page and I'm really grateful for your happy presence and all the support. Thank you, have a wonderful day.